Hi everyone, welcome to A Kitchen Empties. I haven't done one of these in eons, so I have a lot. You would not believe, maybe I'll film it and show you how much I have. I have a tray full right here, and then I have different categories lumped all over the place. So we'll start off with the kitchen, and we'll start off with somewhat healthier. I don't have everything here, <laughs> thank goodness, with everything I have, but um, like when you get fruit, you know, it's hard to save those wrappers. I do have some. And just Mark thinks it's hilarious that I save our trash and he's like, should I save this? <laughs> so, or like a meat wrapper. I eat, and so does Maggie, our golden retriever, a lot of eggs and I don't have any egg cartons here. We go to the farmer's market in the winter in the valley and then up here in the summer. We're blessed that they have different seasons and so we get farmer's market year round. Beautiful eggs, but I didn't save any of the containers. We probably go through at least a dozen eggs a week, sometimes more. I also make her dog food with eggs in it. I, for a quick snack, eat hard-boiled eggs. I do them up in the Instant Pot. I have them in the fridge for her, for her charcuterie board for puppy hour or for me, I just grab them. So things like that we just don't have. We eat a lot of meat. Mark doesn't consider a meal complete without meat. Um, I can go a day or so without meat, but I don't try not to go too long. So this will just be a good understanding besides all that of what we eat. Lately, I have been into grapefruit. I have been loving it. Now I do sprinkle it somewhere in here. With my, I sprinkle it with my stevia from Trader Joe's. I love this. In my iced coffee, I don't drink hot, but in my iced coffee, I do stevia. And then I also do this like on my grapefruit. Sometimes in my yogurt, if I make it up in the Instant Pot and it's a little tart. The grapefruit, I really like that. I'm trying to, I never eat breakfast. At lunch, I am eating more either fruits or vegetables or eggs. And then at dinner, I'll have more like meat and whatever I'm going to have, but this makes the grapefruit very, very tasty. Navel oranges. I have the occasional piece. These are mainly for our dog Maggie. She does get a charcuterie board. I'm not joking. She definitely gets that every evening and she loves it. And it's all fruit and vegetables. It could be lettuce, cabbage, always eggs and bananas. But then there's apples, oranges, things like that. Coconut oil, this has two uses. We are up in a forest here. To get sap off of Maggie's paws, you put it on and it's like it's a hard rock in there, her poor little paws, and you rub it and you rub it and all of a sudden it just dissolves and it comes out. She licks it, so what? It's coconut oil. We also give her probably a heaping teaspoon every morning at for, you know, just, it's antibacterial, it's good for her coat, she loves it, she eats it right down plain. It's amazing stuff. I really enjoy coconut oil. This is a broccoli cauliflower medley. I usually just buy the broccoli and the cauliflower separate. I didn't this time. I have really been enjoying, and I'm going to try to find all the pieces here, olive oil from Trader Joe's. This is from Queen Creek Olive Mill, which is a famous, in Arizona anyhow, place where you can get olive oil and balsamic vinegars. And I do these together with cranberries. This is from Trader Joe's on usually romaine lettuce and some blue cheese. Oh, it's heavenly. I've really been into my blue cheese lately. I start off every morning and sometimes in the evening with electrolyte water and it makes it really nice and tasty and it also helps calm me, hopefully sleep better and just not stress so much with my crazy work. Camu Camu powder, do not recommend. If you're gonna get a powder, acerola. This does not dissolve in water, it floats. And I kid you not, once in a while I'm drinking my water with the Camu Camu in it and I've inhaled it and I get like dust in the throat. It's awful. If you're going to get Camu Camu, get it in pills. And this is vitamin C and it's a great form of vitamin C. This is Camu Camu fruit. But Acerola in the powder is what dissolves. So if you want the powder, get Acerola. 
If you want the pills, get Camu Camu. Anchovy paste. I use this in a Caesar salad recipe. Really, really easy and good. I'll link it below. That's another thing that I've been into, which I really love. And it's easy when you've got the Caesar salad dressing made up and you just put on some Parmesan cheese onto the lettuce and the dressing and you're good to go. The other quick snack I love is chicken sausage. I don't do a lot of this. I prefer to make my own and I'll link my sausage balls recipe below. It's um, keto, I think it's Italian sausage, egg, cheddar cheese, that may be it. And you make them into balls and put them in the air fryer and it comes out beautiful and then I freeze them all. And then I can just grab a couple and microwave them, grab a hard boiled egg, there's my lunch. Flat seed. I grind this up for Maggie and we give her probably half a teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon a day in her food. I also do some of it in my yogurt which makes it delish and I also do chia seeds in there which I don't have. For date night I frequently pop over to Trader Joe's and I got this grass-fed beef sirloin roast fully cooked and sliced. This sucker was $15. It was not good will not repurchase. It was just nothing at all that either one of us liked. We had leftovers and we're both like, do you want it? I, I didn't want to throw it out, but it was not good at all. Sardines. I like the occasional sardine on crackers and Maggie loves them. I've started feeding her raw. If you want a video about that, let me know. But I try to rotate what I, I have a base that I do and then I try to rotate the extras. So sardines are one of the extras. I give her one in her food occasionally and she just goes crazy for it. Baking soda, I don't remember what I was baking but I obviously used it for something. I used up Worcester sauce. You don't see people use up a lot of Worcester sauce all the time so I guess I should be proud. A soy sauce. People say, oh Al, that's not good for you. I am not afraid of salt. This is low sodium, which I wouldn't buy again. I like the full sodium. Same with when I go to a sushi restaurant, I get the full soy. That being said, I don't think soy sauce is good for you. As we know, soy isn't good for you. But I don't claim to be perfect. I try to minimize the bad things. Like, I've said before, I'll, you know, you try to be perfect and then you'll end up getting hit by a bus. <laughs> it's not worth it. I want to enjoy my life without doing things extreme. So soy sauce, I don't do it all the time. Maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon maybe in a recipe and then maybe some once a month when we go for sushi. So it's not a huge quantity and I'm perfectly fine with it. And then I have a feeling this was for a roast because, yes, it was. The gravy mix, the onion soup mix, and the Wooster. And I'll link the roast recipe below. It was really good and it was in the Instant Pot, which I love. I love my Instant Pot. If I had to keep only one appliance, that would be it. Butter. I'm not afraid of butter. I love my butter. Everything's better with butter, in my opinion. Salted and unsalted. The unsalted is for baking. Salted I use on my hard-boiled eggs. I'll put some on top of steak if I don't have any duck fat. When I was sick from being vegan, my functional doctor got me to buy duck fat, and that is so delicious on top of steak. But if I ever don't have any, butter is almost as good. And I don't think there's anything at all wrong with butter. I think they've scared us over stuff they shouldn't and told us stuff is healthy that isn't. <laughs> this is not very healthy. It's sliced, which is convenient. It's Trader Joe's Munster cheese, but if you get the brick cheese and slice it up yourself, if you compare ingredients, there's a whole lot less bad stuff. It's simpler ingredients in a brick of cheese. So I always buy the bricks and that's what I use, but Mark likes the convenience of the sliced. These are from Trader Joe's and they are delicious. It is grainless granola. So it seems like it's clusters of granola, but it's not. It's all nuts. It's almonds, coconut, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds. It's vegan. It's gluten-free. 
and it is delicious. There is also coconut oil, sea salt, um, there is mixed tofurols in here for preservatives, but there's not, oh there is coconut sugar and tapioca syrup, chicory root. So it's not bad at all, it's really good with the seeds and it tastes like granola. I throw this in my yogurt and I love it. Something else I throw in my yogurt is frozen fruit. This happens to be raspberries. I do a lot of blueberries and Maggie gets some fruit in her every meal. Um, usually blueberries, but sometimes raspberries. I have occasionally been doing overnight oats. I know oats aren't that good for you, so I don't do them that often. It is convenient to go in the fridge, grab that mason jar, and it's all pre-made. I do mine with fruit, chia seeds, flax seeds, um, a little bit of milk and water. I actually don't like it as much as overnight oats. What I prefer is to have the microwaved and then I stick it in the fridge after. You can also control how runny it is or isn't when you microwave it, but just adding in that grainless granola, all kinds of different things in there, really, really good. I enjoy that, but I don't have it that often. Um, the oatmeal, I also put in Mark's oatmeal cookies, which he loves. So ketchup and mustard, Heinz, there's no other kind. I don't mind trying no names on some things, not on other things. Mark uses this, burgers, sandwiches, things like that, and then I have a link below a really good recipe for Sloppy Joes, and it uses quite a lot. I think there's another, trying to think of what it is, I don't know if it's this, the chili that I make for him, but that's where I use this up. I'm pretty sure this was in the Sloppy Joes. Okay, now we're getting into dessert. I will post below this recipe. It's so easy and so good. It's in a bunt pan, which makes everything fancier. You make it as per directions and you add this and then maybe an extra egg. I don't remember. Throw it in the bunt pan and cook it. Oh, I do chocolate chips too. And it gives it that texture. Really, really an easy, good thing to do when you have company. And it's nice to have on the counter when people are staying with us so they can just help themselves. The other one, I don't have ingredients here for that because I haven't made it in a while, but if I ask Mark what easy bundt cake he wants me to make, unconditionally the answer would be lemon poppy seed. So I'll link that one below as well. We'd like after dinner some small kind of sweet. Mark from Trader Joe's likes the dark chocolate covered caramel and he literally just has one. Dark chocolate covered almonds, I have two or three, but they're just an almond. So either way, they're really good. I try to do dark chocolate and that way it's not as creamy and I don't go for it as much, but plus it's a bit healthier. Okay, for my coffee, I know I shouldn't, like I said, I'm not perfect, but I have the dispenser pumps, I'll link them below, and they work on this size bottle, so if I have a big bottle, I refill. Go to Ross if you have one near you. This is $8 and this one is $4. They're at least $2 more online. I love caramel. As you can tell, this one's caramel and vanilla caramel. I put a pump in my coffee. And speaking of coffee, they only sell this at Trader Joe's in the fall. Autumn maple coffee. It is delicious. I only put mm, maybe two tablespoons in with the rest of my coffee. I usually do decaf, and this is caffeinated, but it's just the flavor of that maple in there. It is really good, and I think I'm out now, so I'll have to wait and stock up on it again in the fall. Okay, we're on the home stretch. I've got a couple items for Maggie, and then household items. If your dog has any kind of gut issues, which she did, and that's why I switched her over to raw food, but this will help them. If they're itchy, if they have allergies, if they have diarrhea, Fortiflora, really, really good stuff. I'd also, and I'll link it below, um, Four Leaf Rover. They have allergy meds, they have gut meds. I'll link a few of them. Those are also really good. I tried so many things and I saw an improvement, but the biggest improvement has been switching her over to raw. And then her 
she gets the liquid ivermectin. I'm just using up the pills and then we'll do the liquid as well. This is with her pyrantal pomoet and we do it once a month, all three of us. And I did a video on parasites, which everybody has, especially if you have a dog, eat vegetables, eat sushi, been around somebody with an animal, you will have parasites. So we treat ourselves once a month and we are all much healthier for it. Put this in a bag because it's all sticky. This is an omega-3 that I give to her. It's wild sourced, it's grizzly salmon, and we just put a pump in her morning and her evening meal. Really good for their joints, it helps um, their organs, it helps her to have a good coat. So um, definitely something, especially if you are home feeding, whether or home cooking, whether you're cooking or feeding raw, I think it's advisable even with kibble, but definitely if you are making your own for them. For household items, this Cascade Complete Dishwashing Soap. My mother, when I was young, used Cascade and it eroded through her fine crystal glasses right near the wine, the stem. There started to be leaks. I think she had red wine or cranberry juice or something and she had the whole table set with these beautiful wine glasses and they were getting poured up and all of a sudden one started dripping. So she quickly got a cloth and took it away and then another one started dripping and they found out that it was from using too much Cascade. It's very, very abrasive. We only use maybe a teaspoon, but I am considering doing my own homemade with I think it's borax, washing soda, citric acid, I'm not sure exactly. If any of you do homemade dishwashing detergent, please tell me what you think of it and let me know if you have a link to the recipe because I just, something that eats through your glasses, I'm not sure how healthy that is. And speaking of which, this is garbage. Um, the rinse aid, one of you told me, I'm sorry, I can't remember who, that this leaves a residue on your dishes and it probably comes off when you're having food. I no longer use rinse aid, I am doing vinegar. So all I do is put in my dish soap and just straight into the dishwasher, put a glug of vinegar. Shut it, let it run, the dishes come out beautifully, the glasses are crystal clear and I'm not too concerned about vinegar on my dishes. Ivory dish soap, this is probably not the best with the ingredients, but I love it. I don't do a lot of hand dishes. Um, what we use this for mainly is we pre-wash our dishes before we put them in the dishwasher. So when we're giving it a scrub with the brush, we'll throw on some soap and then rinse it off and put it in the dishwasher. So I'm okay with it. For laundry, I think I've got some things here that this is no longer available from the dollar store, Awesome Oxygen. I really, really enjoyed it and was disappointed when they no longer had it. There's Maggie, she wants me to play with her. You might hear some more squeaks. Um, but instead, I use maybe a quarter cup of baking soda in my laundry. And sometimes I put in a splash of vinegar along with my laundry soap. And yes, I have ingredients to buy or to make my own um, laundry soap, but I just haven't done it yet. I'm using some up. And the little girl just brought me her squeaky. Do you want to play? Because I'll have to turn it off if we're playing. Can you wait for a minute? I'm almost done. Thank you. Glade, again, not the healthiest, but it doesn't touch our skin. We spray it in the toilet and use it like poopery. And you never know that one of us was in the bathroom, usually, Mark. Bleach. I use this. In, I don't like cleaning toilets, so if I see they're not clean in between my housekeepers, I'll throw a splash of this in. I will occasionally use it in the laundry, but you gotta obviously be careful that you don't bleach anything and put spots on it. I always use this on my floors up here. We have wood floors in the valley, and all I can use down there is water, sometimes vinegar, and then rinse it off with the water. But up here, I love using bleach. I like having tile floors. And then the last thing was my jacuzzi. We drain it and refill it twice a year, April and October-ish. 
When I drain it, I refill it and put in this metal gun. And when I refill it with the hose, I have this filter. And you can only use it one time. Both of these things mean I do not fuss with my chemicals. I put in two teaspoons of Spa Guard chlorine once a week. That's it. As long as I do these when I'm refilling the jacuzzi. So if I do metal gun and this my chemicals don't get out of whack. I just do two teaspoons of that spa guard and I'm good to go till the next week. And I use my jacuzzi a lot when we're up here. Okay, so that's everything I had. She thought she'd come in and say hello. And I hope everybody is having a great day. And I really appreciate your hanging out with me. We'll talk to you next time. Look over there. Say bye, everyone. What are you looking at? You don't know. Look at the camera. Maybe there's a lizard. Oh, that'll make you look. <laughs> now she's off hunting the lizard. <laughs>